Hey guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be showing you how to update your modded or rooted Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL to the January security update for 2018. So just like mine, when, when I check for updates it actually doesn't say there are new updates. Now this is probably due to I guess maybe some system or even vendor modifications. So if you're like me stuck on a previous build of Android and you're wanting to get to the latest and greatest, so the steps I'll be doing today will cover reinstalling TWRP and rooting this pixel and if you haven't actually installed TWRP you can follow my previous month's video which is a little bit simpler and may work better for you if you don't have TWRP as today this video I'll be showing you how to update your Pixel 2 with TWRP installed so let's get started first up you're gonna need to download a few things as usual first up is the SDK platform tools now this is just a standalone package where it contains things like ADB and fastboot so our computer can communicate with our device. So just click on the one that's right for your operating system and always be sure to download the latest version. So if you're unsure, don't worry about it, it's very small, just download it again. Next up, you also want to download the latest factory image for the Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL. So since mine is the Pixel 2, I'll be selecting Walleye from the right hand side. And you can see here for January, there are actually two versions here. One for those on the O2 UK network and one for the rest of the world. So make sure you choose the one that's most appropriate for you. And if you're unsure, then you might as well just pick this one here. So depending on which carrier you're with, you might want to choose one or the other. Next up, you'll want to download the latest version of the Magisk flashable zip. You can do this by just scrolling down and downloading the latest Magisk here. Next up, if you have TWRP, which uh, maybe you do, this is where you want to download Oh, this is actually where you want to read and see if TWRP works on the latest build of Android. Now I've read through a couple of the last pages and I don't think anyone says anything too much. You also want to visit this XDA thread to see if anyone has any issues when they updated their phone and maybe TWRP doesn't work because as stated on their website, monthly updates can break the decrypt uh, functionality in TWRP, therefore being unable to access the data partition so I guess that kind of makes TWRP not as useful, if all useless maybe, but that is also something to consider every time and before you update your device. And there is a way to test it, and I'll just walk through that. I'll just talk about it. So in the download section for TWRP, you also want to make sure that you have the latest image file, and I highlighted everything, but you want the latest image file, and you also want the latest Pixel 2 or TWRP installer. So once you've got those two downloaded, you can head on over and start the upgrading process. So as you can see here, I have downloaded the factory image. I've downloaded the TWRP installer. I've downloaded the latest platform tools for Windows. I've downloaded the latest Magisk zip and also the latest TWRP image. Now to begin, obviously you want to back up anything that you need on your phone just in case things go wrong. I'm not saying that it will, but I can't say that it won't either. So to begin, we're going to extract a few things from a variety of zip files. First up will be from the platform tools, where we're just going to extract just the files that we need. Now just in case we do need to push or do anything else using ADB, I'm going to be extracting adb.exe and the two related DLLs. Next up would be the fastboot exe and then the libwinp thread-1 DLL. So all in all, you'll be extracting five files. Once those are extracted, just in the same folder as where everything else is, you can close the platform tool zip and we're going to be opening up the factory image zip. Open up the folder within and we're going to be updating our bootloader and radio images like so. And then we're also going to open up the zip file here, the images. It just contains all our images and there are a lot of images. So what we want to do is extract the following, the boot image, we want to extract the system image and system dash, oh sorry, underscore other image and then the vendor image and we're going to extract those files out like that. This is a kind of a dirty upgrade if you will. We're not necessarily flashing everything that is included in the zip file because uh, some of them may be unnecessary but if you do run into any issues you may be wanting to flash all this and you can do that using the flash all script that's included with the factory image. Maybe I'll make a video about that some other time but for now we're going to be using or doing it the quick way. 
So once everything is extracted, you can pretty much close this, the factory image zip file. And from here, you want to make sure that you've copied the latest version of Magisk and the Pixel 2 TWRP installer to your phone. So once you copy those two files to your device, we can now reboot our phone into the bootloader. Now to do this, all you have to do is hold the power button and with your phone plugged in or not, you can press restart and as soon as the screen freezes, you can hold volume down, like now. When you do this, your phone should boot into the bootload mode eventually, so just keep holding it onto the button in case your screen is still black like mine. It may take a few extra seconds, but eventually your phone will get into the bootloader like so. Don't worry if the menu changes up there, nothing to worry about. So right now we can actually start flashing the images. So of course we're going to go back to our computer here, and from here we're going to open up a new command prompt or terminal or PowerShell window. To do this on Windows, you can hold shift and right click in an empty space in the same folder, and this will open up or allow you to select something that says open command window here or open PowerShell window here. And this just changes the command prompts directory to the same one where all your files are to make things a lot easier so we can use our ADB and fastboot executables. First up, to see if our device is connected properly, we're going to type in fastboot with two O's devices. Give it a few seconds and it should return the serial number of your connected device. Next up, we're going to flash the new bootloader. So we're going to type in fastboot flash bootloader and then drag in our image, bootloader image. And we'll also flash the other bootloader as well. You can see here it flashed the bootloader B. Now to flash the other bootloader or partition, we type in fastboot flash bootloader other, leave a space after the bootloader other and drag in the bootloader image. And that'll do the same thing for the alternate slot. So yours could be A, yours could be B, but in my case, mine is B. And we're going to reboot our phone back into the bootloader. And we'll do this by typing in fastboot reboot dash bootloader and hit enter. Once your phone is back in the bootloader, you can see that our bootloader version has changed, which is good, and that our phone still boots up, which is also another good thing. Next up, we're going to be updating the radio images, and we're going to do it the exact same fashion. We're going to type in fastboot flash radio, leave a space in the end, drag in our radio image, hit enter. You can see that it's updating radio B. We're actually now going to update the other side of the other slot. So we're going to type in fastboot flash radio underscore other, leave a space after radio other and drag in the radio image once more. And this will flash the radio to the other side as well. Next up, we're going to now flash the kind of the images of the factory image, which and we'll start with the boot image. So for this one, we're going to do pretty much the same thing. We're going to type in fastboot flash boot, leave a space after boot and drag in the boot image. Hit enter, and we're going to flash the other boot image as well. So A, slot A in my case. We'll type in fastboot flash boot underscore other. Leave a space after that, drag in the boot image, and hit enter as well. Once that's done, we're going to now do the system image. Now keep in mind, the system image has two separate images for your primary and secondary slots. So for the primary slot, we type in fastboot flash system. Leave a space after system and drag in just system.img. This will this may take a while since it's actually quite big, 1.87 gigs. So if that happens to you, just type in the uh, the alternate slot or the slot that you're currently on instead. And the slot you can see is over here, mine says B currently. So we'll wait for the system image to flash, shouldn't take too much longer now. Once that is done, we're going to flash the other system image, and we're going to type this like so, fastboot, flash, system, other, underscore other, sorry, and then drag in our system underscore under image. And also, don't forget to leave a space after other, and this should work just fine. Now, the system underscore other image is actually smaller, so this shouldn't take quite as long as our primary system image. 
Now again, this is also having issues, but it could be just me typing in the wrong things, but we'll do it the other way. So we'll type in fastboot flash system underscore a, leave a space and then drag in system underscore other. Now this is only because I'm on, my current slot is B. Please don't just copy what I type in blindly. You want to make sure that whatever slot you're on currently is your primary slot and whatever slot you're not on is your secondary slot. And there's only A and B. So for me, I'm currently on B, therefore my other partition or other slot will be A. And that is why I chose system underscore A to flash the system underscore other image to there. Now if you have any confusions, just leave a comment down below and I'll try to help you out. Once you're done flashing the system image, we can now move on to the vendor image. I'm going to type in fastboot flash vendor, leave a space after vendor and drag in the vendor image. Now this seems to be okay, so I guess it's maybe just the system partition that's a little bit picky. And it probably is so. And we're going to flash the other vendor partition as well. Type in fastboot flash vendor underscore other, leave a space below or after that and drag in the vendor image. Now after flashing that stock boot image that we did earlier on, TWRP will no longer be installed on our device and nor will Magisk as well. So right now we're going to need to boot the TWRP image and finish the TWRP installation. So to do this, we are going to boot the TWRP image that we downloaded earlier. To do this, we're going to type in fast boot, boot, leave a space after boot and find our TWRP image. Drag that in and hit enter. Now if you do encounter issues like I have in this case, you may want to reboot your phone back into the bootloader and try again. As you can see, it just ended up working out. So our device will now promptly boot into the TWRP screen where we'll finish off the rest of this update. This is assuming that you've copied over the files that I told you to copy over earlier. Now to do this, we just need to decrypt our data partition, which is quite normal. So enter your pin, passcode or pattern and make sure it's the right one and your phone should be able to decrypt the data partition so we can access the contents of the internal storage. Once that's done, first up, we're going to need to flash TWRP. Find the TWRP installer, tap on it and swipe to flash that. Now after we flash TWRP, this will install TWRP to both the A and B slots. So this may take a little bit longer than our traditional kind of TWRP installation, but it makes sure that we are able to access TWRP uh, no matter what. Generally speaking, you won't need to change slots that often, um, but slots will change upon taking an OTA. So just be wary of that. After installing TWRP, you can now install Magisk. Now I'm just going to quickly grab the latest version of Magisk here and flash that. Once this is done, your phone, you can reboot your phone, and after that, you should see that your phone is rooted, and we'll also see that TWRP is still installed afterwards. Alrighty, so our phone has just finished booting up here. Everything went pretty well, I would suppose. So let's just take a quick look at Magisk Manager and see that we're still rooted and on the latest version of Magisk, which is also great. Uh, let's just try checking our safety net status. I haven't had much luck with this recently, but hopefully this works out and uh, we'll see quite soon. There we are, we're passing safety net. Funny thing, my 6P didn't, but this one does. But it's probably because I've done something to the 6P that I haven't managed to work out just yet. But as you can see, Magisk Manager is working and we are rooted. And I think that's it. We're passing safety net. So this is how you can upgrade your rooted or modded pixel. And of course, I think one more thing I have to show you is TWRP. And let's just double check that we're on the latest version here. Yes and yes. So yeah, I'm just gonna reboot my phone into TWRP and then we're going to end off on that. So all in all, this is how you update your rooted or modded Pixel 2 or Pixel 2 XL to the latest version of Android and uh, you are able to do this while keeping TWRP in the end and also preserving root access without losing any data. Now one thing I probably forgot to mention in the beginning, which I'll probably have to make note of somewhere, is that you should try to uh, remove all 
of your substratum overlays or any themes that you've applied using the substratum theme engine before updating just in case some things go wrong. Uh, this was probably more notable when you were upgrading from Android 8.0 to 8.1 and that is where you probably want to uninstall those overlays. It's also a pretty good idea to do so anyway but you can always uninstall overlays through TWRP anyways using their rescue zip. So I'm just, you can see here that my phone rebooted into the recovery TWRP without having to do anything. So that's it guys, thanks for watching and as always, happy flashing.